So in this video, we're going to talk about if this system is properly grounded and if it requires a grounding electrode to a true earth ground. So first, the manual states that the AC input needs to be connected to a true earth grounded system, and that is supplied by the grounding conductor at the AC input. Now, if I were to run my own grounding electrode to that panel, to a true earth ground, what I essentially would have done is created a ground loop. And that would run directly through my system. If I were to have a lightning strike nearby and there was a charge gradient across earth, the amount of voltage that would go through my system would destroy my components. And that would be a horrible thing. If you have a true earth grounded system, you want to tie to a grounding electrode only at one place. Even if you have two or three grounding electrodes, you still want to tie it at one location only. Having the grounding electrode on one side of my property and having an auxiliary grounding electrode on this side of the property going through equipment is an awful, awful idea. Now let's talk about how this system is grounded, not earth grounding, but how it is grounded. And this has to do with fault mitigation if you have a charged case. And you do not want someone to be shocked and you do not want static imbalances across your system. Because as you guys know, if a hot lead were to come in contact with a case and you were touching a neutral, somehow you could get shocked. So let's imagine for a second that this is an earth grounded system because it is because we have an AC input that's connected to ground. And I were to have a live hot conductor touching the case of one of my equipment. We could have a shock hazard because it could go through the case through my body to ground. Now let's imagine that the AC input is not connected to a true earth ground system. And we simply have a hot neutral and then a ground for the cases at the panel. If I were to touch the neutral or the hot alone, I would not get shocked because I'm not completing any form of circuit. If there is no true earth ground, it's an ungrounded system, which there are quite a few systems that are fine running like that. There is no way that the current can flow through me to an imaginary ground that I have not created. But if it is a grounded circuit, you want to tie to ground at one spot. You do not want an auxiliary electrode because like I said, that will damage my equipment. Now what the manual does state is dissipating excess charge accumulation on the PV conductors. Okay, if I have a large array or I have large wire runs, <laughs> accumulation of charge can occur and you want a surge protection device or an SPD to dissipate that to a true earth ground. In that instance, that makes absolute logical sense. And that's what I'm gonna do once I get a larger array connected and I think about how I'm gonna wire these PV conductors. I will add my own surge protection device and I will run it through that. But having an SPD connected at the PV input will not mess with our grounding at the AC input on this system. An SPD only dissipates excess charge accumulation in the event of a surge. It is not the same as running my own ground electrode and tying it to this panel. Now let's imagine that this is a marine system and we have a DC bus with non-current carrying conductors to things like radio communication equipment and we need a reference voltage across the entire DC circuit. In this instance, having a true earth ground to dissipate excess charge accumulation and to have a reference potential makes absolute and perfect sense. But in this instance, I just don't see any point of grounding my DC bus system. There's no point to doing it. Now let's talk about AC fault mitigation at the AC output of this system. Let's say a hot conductor were to touch the case of this or the panel. What would happen is that the overcurrent protection in the inverter circuit would instantly be triggered. But it is crucial to use the proper gauge conductor from the AC output, the grounding and the neutral conductor out to the panel. That's why we have the output terminals sized in the way they are. The electrical engineers that designed this understood that you need a grounding conductor and it needs to be tied at the panel. Especially if you have multiple inverters, you need those grounds connected. And if the ground was separate and we didn't have a single point in and out of these inverters, then I would run my own ground. But that's not how these systems are designed. You can't just ground everything to true earth ground and expect it to work. Also, people think that circuit breakers will be tripped by a true earth ground. If I were to lay a line on the ground, you have to understand that there's a gradient and there's a certain amount of resistance. It's not a perfect conductor 
conductor to use ground. It will shock and kill you if it runs through your body to ground, but it will do nothing for fault mitigation. You need to run the proper size conductors as it states in the manual and use these components how they're designed to be used. I keep getting comments of people saying, oh, just tie it to an earth ground rod. And I'm like, no, that will destroy my equipment. Why in the world would I want to do that? And I understand why in other instances we ground or we want a true earth ground. But in this instance, having a true earth ground on the AC input and having a surge protection device on the PV input makes perfect sense. But creating a ground loop does not. And that's all I have to say. If you guys disagree with me, please state specifically why in the comment section below. Um, I'm gonna have some links and stuff about grounding versus grounded and how that stuff works. And I suggest everybody check them out if you have time. Anyways, thank you so much for watching my video and I will talk to you later, bye.